In this video, I'll demonstrate how to use follow actions to create semi-random and improvised arrangements. This video accompanies my last video entitled Ableton Live Editing Clip Create Multiple Variations. If you're unsure at all about how I've prepared these clips before setting the follow actions, check out that 4-minute video first. Follow actions are specific settings to each individual clip that tell the clip to do something once it's done playing. I'll get into what those options are in a second, but first let's see where the settings are located. First, you must be in session view to see these settings, as they only apply to the clips in that view, not to any horizontal tracking information in the arrangement view. Next, make sure that you've unfolded your clip view by either clicking on the triangle in the bottom right of your display, or by double clicking on a clip. Next, if it's not already open, click the little L icon to display the launch controls of the clip. For our purposes in this video, we'll only concern ourselves with the follow action portion of these controls. Just make sure that your launch mode is on trigger, legato is not selected, quantization is on global, and velocity sensitivity is on zero. If you want an explanation of these controls, the Ableton manual is great, as is the info view on the left here that can be unfolded with this arrow. Whenever you scroll over a parameter, this view gives you a brief explanation of what that parameter does. The info view is a great feature of Live. Okay, so now let's look at what our follow action settings consist of. As I mentioned before, a follow action is telling a clip to do something once it's done playing. Let's take a look at what those options are. Notice that there are two drop-down menus in this section. They're called Follow Action A and Follow Action B. You can use one at a time or both together. For a quick and clear example of what they do, let's try this setting. We're going to tell this clip that after a predetermined amount of time, it will trigger any clip in the column, potentially including itself. We'll set follow action A to any, and we'll leave B at none, or no action. Now let's tell it how quickly after we trigger our clip that we want the action to occur. We use these three boxes in the Follow Action Time section to determine how long the clip plays before triggering the action. This box is bars or measures, the second is beats or quarter notes, and the third is sixteenth notes. It's important to note that a follow action happens exactly after the duration that is specified by the Follow Action Time controls, these three boxes here, unless clip quantization is set to a value other than none or global. This is why I said at the beginning to set your launch quantization to global, which allows follow action time to circumvent it. Follow actions circumvent global quantization, but not clip quantization, which is any one of these other note values seen in the dropdown, such as 8 bars, quarter note, 16th note, etc. So if you've got your clip quantization set to 8th notes, that's when the follow action will happen, no matter what these three boxes say. If quantization is set to none or global, the three boxes control the follow action time. Next let's look at these two values at the bottom, or the follow action chance controls. These boxes control the probability that the follow action will occur. A setting of zero means the follow action never occurs. A setting of one means the follow action occurs every time. Every number above 1 reduces the probability, so a 2 means it happens once out of every 2 launches, a 10 means it happens once out of every 10 launches, and so on up to 999. Let's try one out. The follow action time is set to 1 bar, follow action A is set to any, follow action B is set to none, and the probability to 1, meaning that they will happen every time. We'll duplicate the same settings for every clip. Remember, these settings are not global, meaning they must be set for every single clip. Now watch what happens when I launch a clip. Notice that while my clip is playing, it has already determined which of the any other clips will play next, and that clip's launch button is blinking to signify it will be triggered next. Notice that our parameters are being followed. Every clip is playing for one measure, then triggering any other clip to play, 
and this triggering is occurring every single time. Now that we have these follow actions set, let's take a look at a quick tip that allows you to create improvised arrangements on the fly. Simply bring the playhead to the beginning by hitting the stop button twice, arm the track to record on the transport bar, then trigger a clip. Tab over to the arrangement view and you'll notice that this follow action sequence is being recorded there. This technique allows you to create improvised arrangements quickly and easily. If you want to listen to the arrangement created by your follow actions and record it into the timeline, double click the stop button on the transport bar to bring your playhead back to the beginning, then click play. Notice that when I hit play on the transport bar, you hear the drums, but the clips are grayed out in the arrangement view, until I hit the red back to arrangement button at the top. You may want to rewind that and check it out again, because if you don't understand which view is playing, things can get really frustrating. Audio on a track will only play in one view or the other. If the clips in your arrangement view are grayed out, then the clips in session view are what's playing. To hear audio in arrangement view, click the back to arrangement button at the top. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more tips, tricks, and tutorials.